Becky, how are you? Hi, I'm really well, thanks. How are you? I'm really well. Can I just start by saying, um, I know it was a while ago, Three Identical Strangers, I spoke to Tim. Congratulations, you guys absolutely killed it. What an, oh my God, gripping documentary. Yeah, it was quite a story. It was quite an experience. I know, and now you're here. Now this. Now this. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> yeah, I've got so much to talk to you about, Jeffrey. Um, tell me about this and why you wanted to make this. Oh gosh, I mean, it just, it was so refreshing. You know, it, it was a really, especially off the back of Three Identical Strangers, but um, it just felt like a, a kind of, a, a story about differences and tolerance wrapped up in a big fun Christmas bundle. You know, everyone loves a Christmas movie. It felt really universal. You know, we could talk about, you know, the, a conversation about division that is going on in regards to our personal liberties, but through the lens of this small neighborhood story that you would otherwise know nothing about. So it just, I mean, it just, yeah, it had a whole load of big, there was a big pull on the kind of fun, entertaining watch of a Christmas movie for sure. I love Christmas more than life itself. Christmas tree time, let's go! He doesn't know when to stop. Some people call me Mr. Christmas. Accurate. This is the one. Honey, it's too big for the dining room. Yeah! We gotta get a bigger house. <laughs> Hot, gripping, enticing, shocking, but still all based around reality, which isn't easy to do. I mean, it was just, there was such a sense of, um, you know, Jeremy's obviously a really compelling character, so that helps, you know. The characters in the film are warm and exciting and funny you know they understood and understand that this was a small thing that just somehow snowballs into something completely absurd you know so you know there's a camel in it there's all this stuff that lent itself to something really that you could embrace and I wanted the film to be light-hearted and embrace that the set you know the humor that exists in it while also getting across that this was really serious and is really serious for the people that have lived through it, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, the characters are kind of really uh, another level of um, engaging, I think, in their normalness, you know, they're just average people living in average neighbourhoods. So, um, but ultimately, yeah, I mean, you can wrap this up and tell it as a kind of, it's a retrospective story. So you can kind of romp through this, like you're watching a, you know, a movie. Um, and Jeremy, you know, as your kind of lead character, creates this kind of because he's so <laughs> out of the ordinary you know just gives it gave me so much to work with that was so kind of engaging so and obviously you know the score you've got the ability to kind of have a really fun Christmas score in the film and you know so it, it was a lucky mixture of lots of things that fell into place to make it a great package. Jeremy Morris said that he was going to be purchasing a home in our subdivision. Jeremy asked a ton of questions, seemed kind of weird. This house, it's perfect for hosting this Christmas show. What is this guy up to? This Christmas show, 5,000 people. We need to make it bigger. Noise, the traffic. The people in this neighborhood didn't want it. When we first see him pop up, you see him as this, oh, self-confessed um, Mr. Christmas. But there is definitely a dark side to him. And I kept, every time I thought, oh my God, I don't like him you guys pulled back and showed a little bit of a redeeming quality like oh it's not his fault he was bullied as a kid or there was something there when you were making this documentary i'm sure it took ages to get all this stuff put together how protective do you become of these real people who are slightly like characters in your story yeah i mean really protective i mean it's you know it's a it's a big leap of faith to take part in documentary obviously jeremy took no persuading whatsoever he was very up for it but the neighbors are you know average people didn't want this christy you know again lovely jeremy's wife didn't really want a documentary team on her doorstep on top of everything else and all the other chaos that jeremy creates um so yes you feel really protective but also i think you know you're just ultimately trying to understand people and their motivations and why we do what we do right that's one of the great things of documentary that you get to try and tap into that and ask those questions so i think i really wanted to try and be fair and balanced and show all the different perspectives that exist and also that you know all these different truths of the same story uh, they can all exist you know you can be an honest person and be an unreliable witness you know you we all have different versions of the same events we all have subjective realities so it was part of the filmmaking process to me that was was part of it that was so important was to try and represent accurately and fairly how they each um, sort of experienced this, you know, Jeremy's Christmas show <laughs> and all of the interactions that they all had. So 
you know, yes, you do become protective of them because they sign up to you and they don't have any idea, you know, necessarily who you're making it for or um, what the end product will be. And they commit to telling you their story. So it's a big responsibility, you know, and it, it does, you do often lose sleep at night, you know, of, of hoping that people, um, you know, trust you and that you do a good job. What's going on here is not religious. Penguin. Was frosted a snowman and hot chocolate. It was always his way or no way. At the end of the day, is all of this really worth it? Yes. We all want to be liked, don't we? And there's definitely that sense when you're watching this that you're thinking, okay, I can imagine this. We've all lived in an area where there's one person that goes way too far for Christmas. And they've got lights, they've got decorations, and it's like, oh my God. And then the, I, the way I was thinking about it, because what's really good is you actually put yourself into different people's shoes, because the way you've made this documentary at different times, I'm thinking, oh, how would I feel if I were them? And I was thinking, if there's a fire engine outside my flat, and he's flash they're flashing for a few minutes it's annoying but obviously i'm like i hope everyone's okay but this man's house all through those weeks leading up to christmas i'm talking lights for lights for lights it would drive the average person nuts so when you were there and you were ex i don't know how much of this you experienced and how much of this was your team going and collecting the footage but did you have moments where even you lot as a team were sitting down thinking oh my god no come on guys look it's it's jarring or it's too much or no it's a bit of fun like did you have those conflicts between you guys as a team all the time you know and the crew so i, I was there for all of the filming and the crew were um, mostly american so they all have hoa homeowners association nightmare experiences and you know they all live in a country where the the kind of conversation and argument about personal liberties is is raging you know so we had those conversations all the time and you know, also dealing with Jeremy on a day-to-day -day basis was chaotic and exhausting, um, you know, fun. And, you know, I'm very fond of Jeremy in many ways, not necessarily his way of going about things sometimes, but um, you're, you're constantly like, would this be an absolute nightmare or would I have gone to it and had fun, you know? And so again, because we were all constantly going through the, that mo those motions and that journey and constantly going, oh yeah, I see it. I totally understand why you feel that way. Um, I wanted the film to reflect that and I wanted the audience to feel empathy for different people at different times and, you know, um, sort of uh, allow the sympathies to shift as we unpack, you know, the absurdity of how far it all went. Nobody is going to stop me. It's this constant loop of crazy. A 35 person choir, the camel. Intimidation, boy tactics. If people think I'm crazy, they don't know what I'm going to do next. I love the fun. By the way, I love the funny. Those little moments of funny. And I guess you being the Brit on board, your little sarcastic sense of humour. I don't know if that was just you, but it was really nice to have those little moments because you're just giggling to yourself whilst it's all going a little bit mad. But um, those lighter moments, what were they like for you? And, and the dogs, are they okay? Yeah, the, do the dogs are all right. Um, I really, you know, I wanted the film to be playful. And I think, you know, coming off the back of a series, you know, a long sort of general background of quite serious documentary stuff. Not that this isn't serious, because I wanted people to understand how serious it was for the people who lived in the neighbourhood. But they also acknowledge how absurd this all is. You know, it's not normal that you're having a, a legal a lawsuit where you've got to talk about a camel. You know, it's all of the things felt so, it all felt so absurd that I wanted... And the neighbours all acknowledge that, you know, beyond the stress and the financial impact for, for everybody, Jeremy and Christy included, um, you know, everybody could step back and go, this is completely nuts that we're going to a federal law, a jury trial about this, you know. Um, but again, it, it all speaks to this this bigger issue that's going on. So but I wanted the film to, to reflect some of the the acknowledgement to the absurd of it all and be lighthearted and be entertaining to watch, you know, because... There's a lot of documentaries out there that are so hard to watch because they're, you know, the subject matter and mm -hmm. there's space for them all. And I wanted this to be um, a, a film where people could think about the more serious questions about tolerance and dis uh, division um, while enjoying a Christmas mm -hmm. package, you know. I don't want to say it's the anti-Christmas film because it really isn't because I still got into the Christmas spirit somehow watching it but you know we've got A Boy Called Christmas with Stephen Merchant coming out we've got Silent Night with Kira Knightley we've got Boxing Day with Amel Mean and um, Leanne Pinnock from Little Mix her debut all these Christmas movies and then we've got yours right in the middle over on Apple TV streaming Apple TV Plus how does that feel? 
<laughs> I think it just feels like a reflection of real life, you know. I mean, that's, again, one of the beauties of documentary that there's not always a happy ending, you know. I love a Christmas movie as, as much as anybody, but, you know, there are also Christmas movies that are kind of slightly dark and more sinister and twisted. And I think this one encapsulates, you know, not just Christmas movies, but, you know, it, It's a Wonderful Life and Home Alone and The Grinch and The Truman Show and all these other kind of, you know, it... it, it touches a lot of different areas which is why I hope people will enjoy it whether they're you know living in an American HOA or not because we've all got neighbors right and yes. that sort of living alongside each other is one of the things we have to really learn how to do better I think we'll be getting worse at you know certainly getting worse at talking to each other about things um but also you know it's nice everybody acknowledges that going home for Christmas is a nightmare everyone's got you know the person who's going to say the wrong thing at the table and more and more I mean god think of the things that you just can't talk about at Christmas anymore there's enough of those wherever you live um so I think this film sort of is a bit of a you know tips its hat to that I wanted to become the guy who saved Christmas oh you didn't get a permit this is a miracle you don't get permits for miracles. 